So on every episode of Across Generations, we want you to be part of the conversation. We want to know what y'all saying in the streets. So for this particular episode, the streets are talking, and we want to throw the mic to Ari Lennox, who was recently doing uh, a live video where she talked about um, her nose. So we'll take a listen to this clip, and we'll talk about it on the other side. And some girl in the comment was like, it's going to be a great day when she really starts liking herself. And I was like, how could she tell? I had doubts about myself through me being triggered by Maury saying what he said about this man. So I felt a way like, bitch, like, why does that have to, what's that supposed to mean? Sometimes not feeling like I belong. I was hanging out with someone and they mentioned like how certain sometimes when celebrities change their appearance like how much their money changes and how opportunity changes and all these things like that and the person basically was like yo like the same thing probably would happen to you and i was just like jesus so it's like a lot of it's a lot of things that have happened ever since i've i've became a singer because there would be little things growing up like tunnel nose all that shit But like becoming like a singer that was signed, it just seems like all of your, all of my insecurities just became heightened. All right. So you heard what Ari Lennox um, had to say. And um, she's a beautiful woman. I think you, you've met her, you know her, you've interviewed her. What's your take? I love Ari. And I hate that Twitter or the internet in general paints narratives about Ari or how she looks. I think she's beautiful. I've always thought she was beautiful. And I think Ari's actually a perfect example of somebody who has to represent for us. Because when I see Ari, I see me. Mm-hmm. So I'm always championing Ari. And yeah, yeah. Wh- whoever, the guy is right though. The moment she starts loving herself, the moment, and I think we've seen it though. Because mm-hmm. now she's fit, she's on stage. Like I love seeing her um, go from zero to 100 and argue with that fan who threw a bottle at her. Like, I I don't know. I love Ari. I love her, too. And I I will say um, what really pisses me off is when we have these negative comments about our edges, our nose, our lips, it ain't coming from white folks. The call is coming from inside the house. And Mm -hmm. that level of self-hate. Now, I do think that level of self-hate does directly come from the um, oppressor. But we carry that. And I want us to stop carrying that message. Like, See our beauty, you know, that's see, right. see. So if your edges ain't smooth, that's how you were born. That's, right. that's the roots. That's the ancestors reaching across generations, <laughs> right. reaching through you, saying, I'm here. Let that kink be your that's superpower right. and be proud that's of that right. kink, right. you know. Um, why do you think that is, Sasha? And what can we do to get out of that? You know, I think part of it is we're literally trying to have a conversation on a lo- level that's so low mm-hmm. that we're stuck in the mud around it, right? And I think part of that mud has been created in an environment that actually lifts up white supremacy. Mm-hmm. Regardless of what we say, we're in that space. I think the way that we actually have to deal with it is you got to rise above it. And so I always talk about you got to levitate. What mm-hmm. does that mean? That means sometimes you've got to actually, that's why I think it's really important when we're saying self-love, uh, to, to young girls that I work with and th- that I work with even through my organization, Southern Black Girls, part of it is to actually start thinking about you have the getting young girls to think about your identity is not set with somebody else defining it, mm-hmm. right? Um, no more than the identity of black women should be set in the context of other people defining it, but that we should define it. And I think even in this case, that on one hand, I am so sorry that, that this sister has to go through this because she's absolutely beautiful. The good thing is... I think it's sometimes in those moments, that's when the breakthrough happens. Because in order for her to move past that, she's got to levitate. She's going to have to go to another level and love herself at a level that's so deep that none of that stuff they're saying. You know, I always, I love this notion of, I love what Beyonce does. Like one of the things that Beyonce does is you could talk about Beyonce and uh, like a dog. Beyonce is not going to say a word, Mm -hmm. right? That it's on some level. I'm I'm raising that because I think that there's something about literally owning yourself and your own power that what people say about you ain't none of your business, Mm -hmm. that you are able to levitate and go to the next level. And I think, but I think that takes a community supporting that, which is what I think women do with each other and black women do with each other. And I think that's why it's so harmful and dangerous when we're out of pocket 
and we're tearing each other down, it has a different kind of impact. When a sister hurts me, you know, a sister or brother hurts me, you know, it's like to, it's like it's to the core, yeah, right. But there's something, so I I believe that we don't expect it because you yeah. don't expect it. I expect it right. from other folks. That's I right. don't mm-hmm. expect it from my right. my, my people. No, yeah. not at all. So I'm hoping that this sister recognizes. Yes, there's an industry standard, but we ain't never been a part of that industry standard, yeah. right? Your very presence, her very presence, is shifting what that identity looks like, right? Yep. I want her to own that because there's power in that. I want her to own that there is a conversation right now about her nose. She, like at the end of the day, yeah, there's a conversation with my nose that in the owning of my nose, I can have other black, hundreds and thousands of other black girls owning their nose. So to see the power, like flip that thing, that what was meant to hurt you and harm you, use that to elevate you. I will say for my own experience, um, being a black woman, I have mostly been unapologetic about it, about how I show up. When um, I had my television show, I dressed how I wanted to dress. I talked about what I wanted to talk about. I attended HBCU. We were taught to love ourselves. You know, grew up in Atlanta, um, born in Cleveland, so spent some years there. But for the bulk of my life, I was in Atlanta. That's a black ass city with black ass people around it. Is you know, it's a beautiful thing. And so I, um, there were times where. Um, my, my question on who I was was not centered on white folks' thoughts and opinions of me. Um, my features for, you know, I, I celebrated my features. My, my experience has not been one to have shame, um, about my body. But I'm curious from you all. I mean, we're sitting here with these beautiful women. Nyla, you have your hair done in a very ethnic way. You look you always look beautiful, but you also always wear your hair very natural. Latasha, you look gorgeous. You've worn your hair natural. You look beautiful with that hair. You look beautiful with this hair. I, I, I'm sitting here surrounded by beauty. And I might have me some more hair tomorrow. <laughs> As you should. Because I'm a As black woman. You should. <laughs> I had a guy, I had a co-worker. He worked in IT and he used to call me the girl with many hairstyles. That's right. And it used to piss me off because he was white and he just... Oh. He was, he would forget my name because I always came in with a different hairstyle. So he yeah. would just be like, oh, the girl with many hairstyle. And it's like, actually, no, my name is Nyla. And right. yes, I like right. to switch my right. hair up, you know. But Have uh, we said that to you, though, it would be different. That's what I mean about our right. community. Yes. Like, you ain't earned the right to even joke with me like that. Exactly. My name is Nyla. Maybe Miss Simone, depending <laughs> on how old you are. <laughs> no, for real. I'm not the girl with many hairstyles for you. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it's funny because that was when I was working with a primarily white company but then when I started working on Charlemagne's show and he has like an all female black staff so I walk into work and they're like oh my god the afro is so cute today or your mm-hmm. twist out came right. out good and I walk, I would walk in feeling like oh wow like I'm so happy to be here it's just different than being called like oh the girl with many hairstyles what's the it's like a yeah. different approach yeah um, well we can't trust the intention behind it because somebody who looked like him was responsible for you know, beating and berating the humanity out of us sometimes. It's not so funny when you say the girl was many hairstyles, when you define me that way. Yeah. Uh, even though his intentions may have been, he could have said that to a white, but like y'all keep that in your community. You know, like mm-hmm. don't joke with, don't, don't joke like that with me. Um, not being a member of the community. That's kind of how I feel about it. No, you, <laughs> I, don't, I don't play like that. But well, I'm sorry. What was your question? I got triggered when I thought about well, that. Well, I understand. <laughs> I would be triggered too. But basically, how you show up in the world, unapologetically. And like, do, do oh. you ever feel like, oh, maybe if I straightened my hair or maybe if I mm-hmm. looked a, a different way? Oh, um, ah. Uh, I did straighten my hair. I kind of, we're you know, we're black right. women. We're versatile. We do a little yeah. bit of everything. But I do thoroughly enjoy wearing ethnic hairstyles, and I definitely love wearing my afro just because it's me, and I feel like we need to get conditioned to love me for me. Gosh. You know yeah. what I mean? So during the pandemic, I actually, like, was just going through a quarter-life crisis. I cut off all my hair. And I kept forgetting that I cut off all my hair. So I would wake up in the morning, see myself and like be shocked. Like I would cry. Mm. And even my dad was so heated that I cut, you know how black fathers are. Yeah. Like you cut your hair, what's going on with you? Da, 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 da. So he was no help. But nonetheless, in me cutting my hair, it really forced me to love like the real me, mm. regardless right. of what I look like, regardless of how long my hair was. Yeah. You know, so um, I'm really thankful that I did it. 
because it, it taught me how to take care of my hair. You know, it's just different from like going from a kid to an adult. An adult version of you, you kind of have to reset because you're a whole new person. Yeah. So, um, and, and it's something about being young, too. Like your mm -hmm. generation has that um, the, the privilege of being able to do that. Yes. It was uh, h harder in the 80s and, and the 90s. I mean, you remember Boomerang right. and Robin Gibbons with the big hair. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, it was just a different time. You also didn't see women on television looking like that. You know, every woman had to have like the same kind of anchor hairstyle. Um, and, and there's literally been laws instituted uh, around things like that.